Postpartum tubules are made easier with a couple of tricks, one of which is using a suction irrigator as a method of elevating the tube through a small incision. You can use the tip of the suction irrigator to pass it behind the uterus and then elevate the tube on the tip, making it easily grabbable with a Babcock clamp. You just need an incision big enough to stick your finger in. Use your finger to see what the suction tip will do. Slide it behind the fundus and elevate the tube. With a retractor placed, it's usually best if the surgeon holds the retractor herself. Now pass the suction tip onto the fundus of the uterus, slide behind the uterus, over to the side, and pull up and out so that the tube will be reachable. You might have to do this a couple of times to get it right. Having the patient in Trendelenburg and airplane position will help. Once the tube is visible, grab it. And now you can use a second Babcock clamp to make sure that you have the tube. Walk it down to the fimbriated end and then find the portion of the tube that you'd like to interrupt. You have several choices of what you could do with the tube at this point, but first make sure it's the tube. Most commonly, a modified Parkland partial salpingectomy is done. You could also perform a Pomeroy salpingectomy or a complete salpingectomy, though they are a bit riskier at the time of postpartum sterilization. What you shouldn't do is place a clip like the Filshi clip at the time of a postpartum sterilization. They're associated with a higher failure rate, maybe not in one-year data, but in five-year follow-up. Here you see the tube demonstrated well. Now let's look at this from a different angle and look at the other tube being brought up. Again, the surgeon should hold the retractor because the retractor hand and the hand holding the suction irrigator need to work in concert. The tip of the suction irrigator just slid behind the fundus with good pressure around to the side and elevated the tube upwards. It's usually pretty simple. This incision is only big enough to stick a finger in. An assistant can hold the retractor now and it's usually useful to hold it down with some pressure so that the tube isn't under much tension. In this case, we'll go ahead and do a modified Parkland. So a window uh, is created underneath the tubal segment and both proximal and distal ligatures are placed and the tube excised. Let your assistant hold the retractor and the clamp while you tie. Hold on to the suture material until you make sure that the tube isn't bleeding. It's much easier to pull the bleeding tube back out still attached to suture. Then it is to find it again. Here the tubal segment is excised. It's not bleeding. We'll cut the sutures. Also uh, note that this actually is the tube. Here I'm looking for the hot dog sign where you can see the little bit of tube sticking out. All that's left is to close the fascia, usually with just a simple figure of eight. The incision's only about 15 to 18 millimeters usually. And then the skin can be closed just with glue, particularly if you made an incision that lies within the umbilicus, which will have great cosmetic results for the future.